Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Franny and today I'm going to keep wrapping up the books that I've been reading this year and I'm gonna tell you straight away that this video and probably the next couple of recent reads are going to be short, I think, because I'll be talking about books that I read back in February and March and April and I'm filming these at the beginning of October. So it's been a while and my memory is absolute shit. <laughs> so I remember what books I liked, how much, but when it comes to things such as characters' names, specific events, and so on and so forth, I'm completely blanking out, so I'll be doing my best, but I apologize for not being too specific or detailed in my wrapping up the books that I've been reading. Also, I am using my ring light for the first time to film videos, and I'll try not to move too much so that you don't see the reflection on my glasses, but it might happen from time to time throughout filming and I can't film without my glasses because that's just not happening because I'm basically blind. So you just gotta have to deal with that. I apologize but this is happening and nothing can stop it. So without further ado, let's just continue wrapping up what I've been reading in 2021. In this video I'll be talking about books 11 through 15. First book I'm going to talk about in this video is a short story collection and it is Modern Love, True Stories of Love, Loss and Redemption by Daniel Jones. I mean, they were curated, selected and all that stuff by Daniel Jones. So this is a short story collection of stories that were published in the Modern Love column in the New York Times. What can I say? These are just stories about love all kinds of love, not just romantic love. There are interracial couples, there are same-sex couples, there are stories about parents and their children, about friends, there's a little bit of everything. It's pretty varied and I loved that. I loved that there were stories about all kinds of love. Some stories were a bit more sad and moving, others were more uplifting or heartwarming or lighthearted, more lighthearted, but I gotta say, and this is pretty rare when it comes to short stories, I loved or really enjoyed the vast majority of them. Maybe there was a couple that I didn't particularly like or connect with, but most of them, they were amazing and a bliss to listen to because I listened to the audiobook, there are many narrators, and I think I liked all of them. It was such a great audiobook. I really recommend this short story collection. I think I gave it five stars or 4.5 stars just because of those couple of short stories that I didn't particularly love but I definitely recommend it and I absolutely recommend the show TV series adaptation that they made from this short story collection. It is fantastic. There are some stunning, incredible actors that they chose, such as Anne Hathaway, for instance, Dev Patel, Kit Harington in the second season, if I'm not mistaken. So many great actors and I absolutely loved it. I laughed, I cried, definitely a overall recommend of everything that has to deal with these short stories. Such great content. And of course, five minutes into filming, the battery died because I'm great at this. The shot might have slightly changed, but we're just gonna ignore it and keep rolling. For the next one, I'm going to be extremely quick about it because it's an Italian graphic novel that hasn't been translated, but I've read it, so I have to mention it. And it's called La Generazione by Flavia Biondi. And basically this is the story of a college student that might have dropped out from college or something, I'm not sure, but basically he's in a relationship with an older man and then things don't quite work out. He comes back home in a small town in Tuscany. He was living in Milan and he has a hard time fitting in with his family that has never really accepted him for who he is because I, maybe he came out or he hadn't come out but the family suspected. No, he had come out and the father 
hadn't accepted him and I think he kicked him out. So he comes back to the small town, he lives with his aunts and his grandmother and basically it's just about him figuring out how to patch things up with his family, what to do with his life and all that stuff. I honestly didn't particularly love it all that much, the story was just okay, it didn't really touch me in any way despite it's, you know, a subject that of course, you know, it's relevant and close to me somehow, even though that fortunately was not my experience, but still, it's something that, you know, touches me as a subject, but not for the way it was dealt with in this graphic novel. And also, I wasn't a particular fan of the art style. It's black and white, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but just the art style per se, like how this illustrator draws. I wanted to give it a try, but didn't quite work out, but it was okay, so I gave it three stars. Then, finally, I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, and this is the first book in the Brown Sisters companion novel series, and let me just tell you, I, I freaking love this book. I adored it. It was incredible. It's a romance. It's just so sweet and funny and well written and just it was, gosh it was such a good time and I wish I had filmed this video right after I had finished that book because I would have remembered things as I should have. The thing is I don't want to talk about this book in a way that doesn't give it justice because it would be such a shame and I honestly, I know it sucks, what I'm saying really sucks, but everyone has read and loved this book, everyone has talked about it, people that are way better at this than me have talked about it extensively and in depth, so if you want to know more about this book, you will find someone talking about it, you will find a video out there that is going to be 10 times, 10 times, what? A thousand times better than what I might be able of doing right now. So I'm just, I'm just not gonna go through it. But it's a love story, it's fantastic. It's not too explicit, but it has smut scenes that are just so, so good. Honestly, it was just so well written, like it was a joy to read. I already read the second book in this companion novel series, Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I did talk about this book in a much better way in my June wrap-up. You can go see it. I will leave it linked up above and down below in the description of this video so you can go check it out if you want so you can see that I'm not such a disgrace. <laughs> I really loved Chloe. I feel like I connected with her in a way, her being more precise, almost in an obsessive kind of way, and being also a bit shy, not really wanting to like burden other people. Like it was just her whole way of being, it just I could connect with it. And she was, I don't know, she was just so sweet. And then the cat, it was so adorable. And Red was just a sweetheart. I think as a book, I liked Take a Hint, Danny Brown more because I just loved how the story um, flowed throughout the book. And I loved that the fight, not really fight, but problem between the two main characters at the end was very um, brief and not as serious as it usually is in romances books where everything is just so dramatic and oh my gosh we can never be together because of this and this and this and I feel like in this first book in Get a Life Chloe Brown it was a bit more like that. I feel like the conflict between Red and Chloe was a little bit not over the top but it was a case of miscommunication that it could have easily very easily been fixed if those two had just talked to each other in a honest and open-hearted way it could have been fixed right away without all you know be um oh my gosh what am i gonna do now i lost this person like that kind of drama but still 
I, I loved it and it was incredible and I loved the ending and I cannot wait to read the third and final book in this companion novel series and I think I'm going to absolutely in love Eve and the third book in the series I think it's going to be my favorite I have this feeling and I honestly cannot wait I'm so excited hopefully before the end of the year if not it's gonna be one of my priorities for 2022 because it just I'm going to I know I can feel that I'm going to love it because I just adore Talia Hibbert's writing style all I'm asking is that she writes a sapphic romance because I need to read a sapphic romance written by her. It's just something that I need in my life. Next up is Save Yourself by Cameron Esposito. She is a stand-up comedian and this is her memoir. It's mostly about her childhood, her Christian, Catholic, very Catholic upbringing and the university years and how she got into stand-up and how she became a very famous stand-up comedian. Um, and of course, her coming out as a lesbian and what being a queer a lesbian woman in that industry in that field as well as in her life and with her christian family and stuff how it all came together i listened to the audiobook of course because it's a memoir and it's narrated by the author herself so you gotta go you know with the audiobook that's just the only way to go about it you know you have to listen to the audiobook and I gotta say, I like her stand-up and I just like listening to her speak. <laughs> so, listening to her audiobook, of course, was a very pleasant reading experience. However, I can't quite say that I enjoyed this memoir because, and this is, I feel like, a problem that might occur when young people write memoirs. It felt very incomplete. If I'm reading a memoir, I'm reading about a journey that, I mean, hopefully it hasn't ended yet because it means that the person is still alive, but the thread, the origin, the nutshell of the memoir needs to have a beginning and a natural conclusion. I expect the author to come to certain conclusions about ideas, problems, thoughts that they had at the beginning of the memoir, like they need to address a specific topic or more topics and then something needs to come out of it. I don't know if I'm explaining myself in a coherent way, but in this specific case, I don't think it happened. She was of course talking about her upbringing and how it was hard to have her Catholic upbringing and her gender sexual identity coexist in a way that they wouldn't be in conflict with each other. I didn't think she got there. I feel like perhaps writing this memoir now was, or when she wrote it, I think maybe one or two years ago, it was a bit premature because she hadn't yet come to certain conclusions about what she was addressing in her book, in her memoir. I understand she went through some tough things, her upbringing was hard, and she got married, she got divorced, and you know, after everything that LGBT plus people had to do to get the right to be married, nobody would ever think about what it means for LGBT plus people to get a divorce. So I understand that you want to write all of that to help queer people to have a role model or just to see that there are people like that out there and that they're not alone. I understand and that's beautiful and that's wonderful, but at the same time, if you're writing a memoir, I expect you to have a conclusion that can stand. I expect you to have reached a point where you're like, okay, this path brought me here. It doesn't have to be the end. It doesn't have to be complete. There are so many things in life that you never understand fully and that's also the beauty of life, but there are some things that need to feel like, okay, I had, I lived through this journey and it brought me here and right now this is what I think. I, 
I don't, I don't know if I'm explaining myself. I, I hope I did somehow, but I had this problem with this book. So, um, I mean, in the end, I, I gave it three stars. It was a pleasant reading experience, listening experience. She's a comedian. She's a stand-up comedian. Of course, it was fucking funny. There were jokes and funny moments and stuff, but I, I, I was a bit disappointed, I gotta say. And the last book that I have to talk about in this video is A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. This is basically like the blurb that got me. Sandra Clare meets fairies set in Canada and with gay shit. The story starts in Toronto and there are eight courts of fairies or fae. There was a difference. <laughs> remember what the difference was and fairies I mean not fairies but like young people who are children of a fairy and a human those people are getting murdered and the fae slash fairy folk they're trying to understand what's happening and there are some teens both like half fae and total fae, I don't know, like they're trying to understand what's going on, basically. Despite my non remembering much of the plot and my complete failure of trying to <laughs> explain what, what this book is about, I gotta say I really liked it. I gave it four stars and yes, it was mostly for all the gay shit because there are lesbians, gender fluid, pansexual, trans, whatever. It's just fucking awesome. There's so much diversity that it was incredible and I loved it and appreciated it and was just awesome and we need more books like this. However, as I've said, there are some things that I didn't quite love as much. The audiobook was incredible. I recommend you listen to it because the narrators were just phenomenal apart from one. I don't remember who it was, but he gave voice to Aurelian Bayan. I loved Nausicaa's and Arlo's narrators and I just loved the relationship between those two. I can't wait to see how it develops in the second book and what happens and all that stuff. So that was really nice. I liked the story. I liked how it developed. I wanted to know who was behind the murders, what was happening and all that stuff. The thing is, if it's going to be a trilogy, maybe it's a duology. I hope it's a duology because the thing is, I feel like had it been a little bit longer and edited in a certain way, it could have been a standalone because I feel like some aspects of the story were pretty abrupt up. So I, I don't quite know how it's going to continue. Of course, since it's going to be a series, there were some threads and like some questions left unanswered and all that stuff. But I feel like it could have been like a long, urban fantasy standalone instead of being a series. That's the impression that I have for now. So I don't know how that's gonna work. Also, I had a problem with the world building just a little bit. What I mean by that is the fact that I feel like there was too much going on. There was fae, fairies, titans, immortal gods, furies, magical, mystical forests. And at times I couldn't really tell the difference between who was what and what that meant exactly. Like it wasn't explained clearly as it was explained, for instance, in the, um, the Infernal Devices series. Like the explanation there was just like, fucking perfect, way better than when it was explained in the Mortal Instruments series. So, you know, like it wasn't explained clearly. And this is the the part where I don't quite agree with the blurb that said that it was like a Central Claire. The vibe is the same, it's urban fantasy in a modern setting, but the descriptions are where Cassandra Clare really just blows your mind. You feel like you're right there in New York or in London or wherever else she sets her stories. The fights are just, you know, like they're narrated in such a detailed, careful way where you can totally picture what's happening. And the fights in this book were not described in a similar way. It was like clanking swords and a person doing this and the other person doing that. But like you couldn't really picture how the fight was happening. Like it wasn't that 
clear yes it was set in Toronto so you know there were some names and streets and stuff but you didn't have the feeling of being in Toronto I've never been there and the book wasn't really telling me anything you know like to make me feel there whereas um, in the Shadowhunter series, I mean, I've been to New York, but after I've read the Shadowhunter books and before that, I, I could kind of feel New York. I could feel the air, the vibe. I, I could, and in this book I couldn't. So the vibe was was kind of the same. The urban fantasy vibe, the banter between the characters was very well done. And also like the messy, confusing, not quite determined relationships between the characters and all that stuff. That, that reminded me a little bit of Cassandra Clare. So the point is, it wasn't perfect, but... I loved listening to it. I was intrigued in what was happening. I was in the story while I was listening to it and I did care about the characters and I do want to know what's gonna happen next. So I gave it four stars and I can't wait for the sequel to be released next year. I am totally gonna listen to it as soon as it comes out. So this was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you would like to. Um, let me know what you've been reading these days, whenever you want. Just talk to me in the comments because you guys know that I love talking to you. Also subscribe if you haven't. You can follow me on all the social media places and we can chat about books. And I'll see you soon in another recent reads video. <laughs> Warm hugs.